Welcome to the class. Today we are going to talk about traditional methods for uh, machine learning in graphs. Um, and in particular, what we are going to investigate is uh, different levels of tasks uh, that we can have in the graph. In particular, we can think about the node level prediction tasks, we can think about the link level or edge level prediction tasks that consider pairs of nodes and tries to predict whether the pair is connected or not. And we can think about the graph level prediction where we wanna make a prediction for an entire graph, for example, for an entire uh, molecule or for, a, for an entire uh, piece of code. The traditional machine learning pipeline um, uh, is all about designing proper uh, features. And here we are going to think of two types of features. We are going to assume that nodes already have some types of attributes associated with them. So this would mean, for example, if this is a protein-protein interaction network, uh, proteins have different um, chemical structure, have different chemical properties, and we can think of this as attributes attached to the nodes uh, of the network. At the same time, what we also wanna do is we wanna be able to create additional features that will describe how um, this particular node is uh, positioned in the rest of the network and what is its local network structure and these additional features that describe the topology of the network, of the graph, will allow us to make more accurate predictions. So this means that we will always be thinking about two types of uh, features, structural features, as well as features describing the attributes and properties uh, of the nodes. So the goal in, uh, in what we want to do today is especially focus on structural features that will describe um, the structure of a link in the broader surrounding of the network, that will describe the structure of the um, network neighborhood around a given node of interest, as well as features that are going to describe the structure of the entire uh, graph so that we can then feed these features into machine learning models uh, to make predictions. Traditionally, um, in traditional machine learning pipelines, we have two steps. In the first step, we are going to take our data points, nodes, links, entire graphs, um, represent them um, with vectors uh, of features, and then on top of that, we are going then to train a classical machine learning uh, classifier or a model, for example, a random forest, perhaps a support vector machine, uh, a feed-forward neural network, um, something of that sort, so that then in the future we are able to apply this model where a new node, link, or graph uh, appears, uh, we can obtain its features um, and make a prediction. So this is the setting uh, generally in which we are going to um, operate today. So in this lecture we are going to focus, as I said, on feature design, where we are going to use effective features uh, over the graphs, which will be the key to obtain good predictive performance, because you want to capture the structure, the relational structure of the network. Um, and traditional machine learning pipelines use hand-designed, hand-crafted features. And today's lecture will be all about these hand-crafted features. And we are going to split the lecture into three parts. First, we are going to talk about features that describe individual nodes, and we can use them for node-level prediction. Then we are going to move and talk about features that can describe a pair of nodes, and we can think of these as features for link-level prediction. And then we are also going to talk about features and approaches that describe topology structure of entire graphs, so that different graphs can be compared um, and uh, classified. And uh, for simplicity, we are going to, to today focus on uh, undirected graphs. So the goal will be, how do we make predictions for a set of objects of interest, where the design choice will be that our feature vector will be a d-dimensional vector, uh, objects that we are interested in will be nodes, edges, sets of nodes, uh, meaning entire graphs, um, and uh, the objective function we'll be thinking about is what are the labels uh, we are trying to predict. So the way we can think of this is that we are given a graph as a set of vertices, as a set of edges, and we want to learn a function that, for example, for every node will give, a, will give us a real valued uh, prediction, um, which, for example, would be useful if we are trying to predict the uh, age of uh, every node in our uh, social network. And the question is, how can we learn this function f that is going to make uh, these uh, predictions? So first, we are going to talk about node-level tasks and features that describe individual nodes. 
The way we are thinking of this is that we are thinking of this in what is known as semi-supervised uh, case, where we are given a network, we are given a couple of nodes that are labeled with different colors, for example, in this case, and the goal is to predict the colors of un, uh, uncolored uh, nodes. And if you look at this example here, so given the red and green nodes, we want to color uh, the gray nodes. And you know, if you stare a bit at this, the rule here is that um, green nodes should have at least two ad edges adjacent to them, while red nodes have at least one edge, uh, have at exactly one edge at, um, uh, connected to them. So if we are now able to describe um, the node degree of every node um, as, a, as a structural feature uh, in this graph, then we will be able to learn the model that in this uh, simple case correctly colors uh, the nodes uh, of the graph. So we need features that will describe this particular topological uh, pattern. So the goal is to characterize the structure of, um, of the network around a given node, as well as in some sense the position, the location of the node in the broader network context. And we are going to talk about four different uh, approaches that allow us to do this. First, we can always use the degree of the node as a characterization of um, uh, structure of the network around the node. Then we can think about the importance, the position of the node through the notion of uh, node centrality measures, and we are going to review a few. Then we will talk about um, characterizing the local network structure, um, not only how many uh, uh, edges a given node has, but also what is the structure of the node around it. First we are going to talk about clustering coefficient, and then we are going to generalize this to the concept known uh, graphlets. So first, let's talk about the node degree. We have already introduced it, there is nothing special, but it is a very useful feature and many times it is um, quite important, where basically we will say the, we capture the, the structure of the node uh, um, V in the network with the number of edges that this node has. Um, and uh, you know the drawback of this is that it treats uh, all the neighbors equally, but in, and in this sense, for example, nodes with the same degree are indistinguishable even though if they may be in uh, different parts of the network. So for example, you know, the node C and the node E have the same degree, so our classifier uh, won't be able to distinguish them, or perhaps node A, uh, H, E, uh, F and G also have all degree one, so they will all have the same feature value, so the, our simple uh, machine learning model would, uh, that would only use the node degree as a feature would be, only, would, would be able to predict the same value uh, or would be forced to predict the same value for all these uh, different nodes because they have the same degree. So um, to generalize be a bit this very simple notion, we can then start thinking about, um, you know, node degree only counts neighbors of the node and uh, without capturing, let's say, their importance or who they really are. So the node centrality measures try to uh, capture, characterize this notion of how important is the node in the graph. And there are many different ways how we can capture um, or model this notion of importance. I'm quickly going to introduce um, eigenvector centrality, um, which we are going to further uh, work on and extend to the uh, seminal page rank algorithm uh, later uh, in, the, in the course. I'm going to talk about between the centrality that will tell us how, uh, how important connector a given node is, as well as closeness centrality that will try to capture how close to the center of the network a given node is. Um, and of course there are many other um, measures of uh, centrality or importance. So first let's define what is an eigenvector centrality. We say that node V is as important if it is sur surrounded by important neighboring nodes U. So the idea then is that we say that the importance of a given node V is simply um, normalized, divided by 1 over lambda, sum over the importances of its neighbors uh, uh, in the network. So the idea is, the more important my friends are, the higher my own importance uh, is. And if you, if you look at this um, and you write it down, you can write this in terms of uh, a simple uh, uh, matrix equation where basically lambda is this uh, uh, positive constant like a normalizing factor, C is the vector of our centrality measures, A is now a graph adjacency matrix, and C is again that vector of centrality measures. And if you write this in this type of uh, forum, then you see that this is a simple um, eigenvector eigenvalue uh, equation. 
So what this means is that um, the solution to this uh, uh, problem uh, here, to this equation here, um, is um, um, this is solved by the, uh, uh, by the given eigenvalue and the associated eigenvector. And uh, what people take as a, uh, no, a measure of node centrality is, is the eigenvector that is associated with the largest um, eigenvalue. So in this case, if eigen, largest eigenvalue is lambda max, um, be, uh, by uh, Peron Frobenius theorem, uh, because we are thinking of the graph as undirected, it is always positive uh, and unique. Then uh, the associated leading eigenvector C max is usually used as a centrality score uh, for the nodes in the network. And again, um, uh, the intuition is that the importance of a node is the sum, the normalized sum of the importances of the nodes that it links to. So it is not about how many connections you have, but it is uh, how, um, who these connections point to and how important uh, are those people. So this is the notion of uh, node centrality captured by the eigenvector uh, centrality. A different type of centrality that has a very different intuition and captures a different aspect of the uh, node's position in the network is, is what is called betweenness centrality. And betweenness centrality says that node is important if it lies on many shortest paths um, between uh, other pairs of nodes. So the idea is if a node is an important connector, an important bridge, an important kind of transit hub, then it has a high importance. Um, the way we compute um, between a centrality is to say between a centrality of a given node V is a summation over pairs of nodes uh, S and T, and we count how many shortest paths between S and T uh, pass through the node uh, V, and we normalize that by the total number of shortest paths um, of the same length between uh, S and T. So essentially, um, the more shortest paths a given node uh, appears on, uh, the more important it is. So it means that this kind of measures how good a connector or how good of a transit uh, point a given node is. So if we look at this example that, that we have here, for example, between the centrality of these uh, nodes that are uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the edge of the network, like A, B, and E is zero, but the, the between the centrality of node uh, uh, C equals to three, because the shortest paths from A to B pass through C, a shortest path from uh, A to D uh, passes through C, and a shortest path between uh, A and E again passes through C. So these are the three shortest paths that pass through the node C, so it's between a centrality equals to three. And by a similar argument, the between a centrality of the node D will be the same, equals to three. Here are the corresponding shortest paths between different pairs of nodes that actually pass through uh, this node D. Now that we talked about how important transit hub a given uh, node is uh, captured by the between a centrality, the third type of centrality that again captures a different aspect of the position of the node is called closeness centrality. And this notion of centrality importance says that a node is important if it has small shortest path path lengths to add all other nodes in the network. So essentially, the more central you are, the shorter the path to everyone else uh, uh, is, the more important you are. The way we um, uh, operationalize this is to say that the closeness centrality of a given node V is one over the sum of the shortest path lengths between the node of interest V and any other node uh, U uh, in the network. So uh, to give an example, right? Uh, the idea here is that the, the, the smaller this, um, the, the more in the center you are, the smaller the summation will be, so one over a small number will be a big number. And if somebody is on the, let's say, very far on the edge of the network and needs a lot of uh, uh, long paths to reach other nodes in the network, then it's between the centrality will be low, because the sum of the shortest path lengths uh, will be high. Um, in this case, for example, you know, the, uh, the closeness centrality of node A equals 1 eighth because um, it has, uh, to node B, it has the shortest path of length 2, to node C, it has a shortest path of length 1, to D, it is 2, and to E is 3, so it's 1 eighth. While, for example, the node D, that is a bit more in the center of the network, has a length 2 shortest path to node A, and length one shortest paths to all other nodes in the network. So this is one over five. So it's between a centrality, uh, sorry, it's node centrality, closeness centrality uh, is higher. 
Um, and then now I'm going to shift gears a bit. I was talking about centralities in terms of how, how important, uh, what is the position uh, of the node in the network. Now we are going to start talking, we are going back to think about the node degree and uh, the local structure uh, around the node. And when I say local structure, it me really means that for a given node, we only look uh, in its immediate vicinity uh, and decide uh, on the, uh, pro uh, on the, and characterize the properties of the network around it. And a classical measure of this is called clustering coefficient. And the uh, clustering coefficient measures how connected one's neighbors are. So how connected the friends of node V are. And the way we uh, define this is to say clustering coefficient of node uh, V is the number of edges among the uh, neighboring nodes of uh, V divided by the degree of V uh, choose two. So this is the number, this is um, K choose two measures how many pairs uh, can you select out of uh, uh, K different objects. So this is saying how many, how many node pairs there exist in your neighborhood. So how many potential edges are there in the net in, in your uh, neighborhood um, and um, uh, this says how many edges actually occur. Um, so this metric is naturally between zero and one where zero would mean that none of your friends, not on, none of your connections know each other and uh, one would mean that all your friends are also friends with each other. So uh, here's an example. Imagine this simple graph on five nodes and we have our uh, red node uh, V to be the uh, node of interest. So for example, in this case, node V has clustering coefficient um, of one uh, because all of its uh, four friends are also uh, connected uh, with each other. So here um, the clustering is one. In this particular case, for example, the clustering is uh, uh, 0.5. The reason being that um, out of um, six uh, possible connections between the uh, four neighboring nodes of node V, there are only uh, three of them are connected. While here in the last example, the clustering is zero because um, out of uh, all four uh, neighbors of uh, node V, none of them are connected uh, with each other. The observation that is interesting that then leads us to generalize uh, this notion to the notion of clustering coefficient to the notion of graphlets, the observation is that clustering coefficient basically counts the number of triangles in the ego network of the node. So let me explain what I mean by that. First, ego network of a given node is simply a network that is induced by the node itself and its neighbors. So it's basically degree one neighborhood network around a given node. And then what I mean by counts triangles? I mean that now if I have this ego network of a node, I can count how many triples of nodes are connected. And in this particular uh, use case where um, um, uh, the clustering coefficient of this node is 0.5, it means that I find three triangles um, in the network uh, neighborhood, in the um, ego network of my node of interest. So this means that clustering coefficient is really counting this triangles, which in social networks are very important because in social networks, a friend of my friend is also a friend with me. So social networks naturally evolve by triangle closing, where basically the intuition is if somebody has two friends in common, then more or uh, sooner or later, these two friends will be introduced by this node V and there will be a link uh, forming uh, here. So social networks tend to have a lot of triangles in them and uh, clustering coefficient is a very important metric. So now with this, the question is, could we generalize this notion of triangle counting uh, to more interesting structures and, and count uh, the number of pre-specified graphs in the neighborhood of a given node? And this is exactly what the concept of graphlet uh, captures. So the last um, uh, way to characterize the structure of the, no uh, of the network around a given node will be through this concept of graphlets that rather than just to, to count triangles also counts other types of structures uh, around the node. So let me define that. So graphlet is a rooted, connected, non-isomorphic um, subgraph. So what do I mean by this? 
For example, here are all um, possible graphlets um, that, that have um, uh, um, a different number uh, of nodes. We start with uh, a graphlet on uh, two nodes, so it's basically nodes connected by an edge. There are uh, three possible graphlets on three nodes, and, uh, there is, uh, and then here are the graphlets of four nodes, and these are the graphlets on uh, five nodes. So now let me explain what we are looking at. So for example, if you look at the graphlets on three nodes, it is either uh, a chain on three um, nodes or it's a triangle, right? It's all three nodes are connected. These are all possible connected graphs on three nodes. Now, why do I say there are uh, uh, three graphlets, not two? Uh, the reason for that is that the position of the node of interest also matters. So here, for example, you can be at this position and then the question is in how many graphs like this do you participate in? Or you can be at this other uh, position here, position number two, and it's basically saying how many pairs of friends do you have? And then this, this in the case of a triangle, all these positions are isomorphic, they are equivalent, so there is uh, only one of them, so this is the uh, position in which you may, you can be. Now, similarly, if you look at now at uh, four node graphlets, there is uh, uh, many more of them, right? Um, um, uh, they, they look the following, right? You again have a chain on four nodes and you have two positions on the chain. You are either in the edge or you are one, one away from the edge. From, if you go from the other end, it is just symmetric. Here, in the second, this kind of star graphlet, you can either be um, the satellite on the edge of the star or you can be the center on the, of the star. In a, in a square, all the positions are isomorphic, so you can be just part of the square. Here's another interesting um, example where uh, it has three different positions. You can, be, you can be here, you can be here, or you can be at position 10, which is isomorphic to the, to the other side. In this kind of square with a diagonal, again, you have uh, two different positions. And in this last fully connected graph on four nodes, uh, all nodes are equivalent, so there is, all, all positions are equivalent, so there is only one. So what this shows is that um, if you say how many graphlets are there on five nodes, uh, there is uh, 73 of them, right? Labeled from one uh, all the way to 73, because it's different graphs as well as uh, positions in these graphs. So now that we know what the graphlets are, we can define what is called graphlet degree vector, which is basically a graphlet base, um, based features uh, for nodes. And the graphlet degree counts um, the number of times a given graphlet appears uh, uh, rooted at that given node. So the way you can think of this is degree counts the number of edges that the node touches, uh, clustering coefficient counts the number of triangles that a node touches or participates in, and uh, graphlet degree vector counts the number of graphlets that, that a node uh, participates in. So to give you an example, um, uh, a graphlet degree vector is then simply a count vector of graphlets rooted at that given node. So, to, uh, to give you an example, consider this particular graph here, and we are interested in the node V. Then here is a set of graphlets on two and three nodes. This is our universe of graphlets. We are only look, going to look at graphlets all the way up to size of three nodes and not bigger. Um, and then, uh, you know, what are the, what are now the graphlet instances? For example, the, the graphlet of type A, uh, this node V participates in two of them, right? It, one is here and the other one is there, right? So this means this one and that one. Then the graphlet of type B, node V participates in one of them, right? This is, um, this is the graphlet here, right? Uh, B. And then you say, how about how many graphlets of type D does, uh, node, um, uh, sorry, of type C does node uh, V participate in. And it uh, doesn't participate in any because uh, here it is, but these two nodes are also connected. So um, because graphlets are induced, this edge appears here as well. So for D we get zero, sorry, for C we get zero. How about for D? D is a path of, on two nodes. If you look at it, there are two instances of D. Uh, here is one and uh, here is the other as uh, illustrated here. So graphlet uh, degree vector for node V would be 2, 1, 0, 2. So 2, 1, 0, 2. And this now characterizes the local neighborhood structure uh, around the given node of interest based on the frequencies of these graphlets that uh, the node V uh, participates in. So um, 
if we consider graphlets from uh, two to five no nodes, we can now describe every node in the network with a vector uh, that has 73 dimensions or 73 73 coordinates uh, and this is essentially a signature of a node that describes the topology uh, of nodes uh, neighborhood uh, and it captures its inter interconnections um, all the way up to the distance of four, four hops right because um, uh, a chain of four edges has five nodes so if you are at the edge of the chain which means you count how many paths of length four do, uh, uh, lead out of that node so it characterizes the network up to the distance uh, of four and a graphlet degree vector provides a measure of nodes local network topology and comparing vectors now of two nodes prov uh, provides a more detailed measure of local topological similarity than for example just looking at node degree or clustering coefficient so this gives me a very fine-grained way to compare the neighborhoods uh, the structure of neighborhoods uh, of two different nodes um, in perhaps two different uh, networks so to conclude uh, so far we have introduced different ways to obtain node features uh, and they can be categorized based on importance features like node degree and different centrality measures as well as structure based features where again node degree is like the simplest one then uh, that counts edges, clustering counts triangles and the uh, graphlet degree vector is a generalization that counts uh, other types of structures that a given node of interest uh, participates in so to summarize the importance based features capture the importance of a node in a graph we talked about degree centrality um, and uh, we talked about different notions of uh, centrality closeness betweenness um, as well as um, the eigenvector uh, centrality and uh, these types of features are using in predicting for example how important or influential are nodes in the graph so for example identifying celebrity users in social networks would be one uh, such uh, example um, the other type of node level features that we talked about were structure based, fe structure based features that capture the topological properties of local neighborhood around the node we talked about node degree clustering coefficient and graphlet degree vector and these types of features are very useful uh, for predicting a particular node's role uh, in the network so for example if you think about predicting protein function then um, this type of graphlet uh, features are very useful because they characterize uh, the structure of the network uh, around a given uh, node